Ottoman expansion strategy started off with a series of raids. An area of land would be raided and the lord of the area was eventually asked to submit in service to the sultan and pay tribute. If the lord refused and kept on refusing, his lands would be raided again and again, making it an easy target for the sultan's armies to take by force. After the conquest, portions of the land would be distributed to the sultan's cavalry and money to the sultan's mercenary army. Many of the Christian vassal lords that submitted to the sultan would serve him as they would a Christian ruler. This would, of course, put their loyalties on trial more than once, as their faith, their honor as loyal warriors, and their self-interest clashed within them. The raids made life in the area difficult, if it wasn't already difficult in the preceding centuries of almost constant feudal anarchy. The raids started a centuries-long process of migrations in the Balkans, where many would move to safer lands, or lands that weren't plundered for all they were worth, migrations that would grow as the centuries of the Ottoman wars in Europe went on. The sultans were also beginning to reform their army, to something that was of a more reliable standing. As the nomadic cavalry, the mercenary armies, and the vassal lords couldn't exactly be completely trusted or adequately controlled. King Sigismund von Luxemburg took the field several times against the Ottomans between 1391 and 1395 to protect his vassals in the Balkans, but he quickly became aware that he needed a lot more numbers to take on the Sultan's armies. In these campaigns, Sigismund got involved in a proxy war in Vlachia, where Prince Mircea was replaced by the appropriately named pro-Ottoman Prince Vlad I, the usurper. Sigismund would then campaign again and help restore Mircea to the Vlachian throne. He followed this up by attempting to assert his position in Moldavia, but the prince of Moldavia pulled a fast one on Sigismund and ended up swearing loyalty to the king of Poland. At the same time, the Ottomans besieged Constantinople and a crusading call rang out across Europe. Sigismund saw an opportunity and began negotiations and arranging for a grand European crusade against the Ottomans, which he, as the nearest, strongest king, would lead, sending envoys all over Europe and even to the Sultan of Egypt. But appears the Sultan of Egypt was not interested. The campaign known as the Crusade for Nicopolis started in 1396. Sigismund's forces were joined by crusaders from all over Europe. They advanced to the Ottoman territory and laid siege to Nicopolis, former holding of the Bulgarian Tsars, and Sultan Bayezid I marched with his army to relieve the siege. This led to a battle on the 25th of September 1396, and it was a complete catastrophe for the Crusaders. Many were captured for ransom, and the fate of Sigismund himself was unknown. Uncertainty caused renewed upheaval across the realm of St. Stephen and its vassal realms. A revolt began led by former Palatine Stephen Lakfe, with the aim of enthroning King Ladislav of Naples, who was currently tied up with fighting off another Louis of Anjou who wanted the throne of Naples. While at the same time Sultan Bayezid I decided to strike back with raids across the entire Balkans in retaliation against the crusade. Sigismund himself turned up in Dalmatia in 1397. He escaped the catastrophe at Nicopolis, allegedly rescued by Count Hermann of Zelle, and made his way back by sea. Upon Sigismund's return, he immediately set out to restore order within his realm. He called Stephen Lakfe and his followers to a meeting in the Church of the Holy Cross in Križevci, where he had them all killed. The event is known in Croatian history as the bloody Sabor of Križevci. Sigismund would use the opportunity to replace even more of his high office holders with the foreigners, one of whom was Count Hermann of Celle, a minor noble of the Holy Roman Empire, who gained authority over regions in Slavonia. The chaos in the realm of St. Stephen would also be used by the three most prominent lords of Bosnia, among whom was Hrvoj Vukčić Hrvatinic, to put up a new king in Bosnia, Ostoja, as their puppet. They would join the revolt in favor of Ladislav of Naples and start taking territory in Dalmatia, again. Sigismund summoned the Diet of the Realm at Timosvara in late 1397, 
to reassert his authority and strengthen the defense of the realm, where he mostly reiterated the Bull of 1222 and the Decrees of 1351, with a few attempted changes. We, Sigismund, by the grace of God, King of Hungary, Dalmatia, Croatia, etc., and Margrave of Brandenburg, etc., during the past few years, to this very day, the Turks and other wicked schismatics, by their attacks and violent actions, have destroyed, looted, burnt down many estates, and have frequently perpetrated, and are still committing, terrible and intolerable deeds in the border regions of our kingdom of Hungary. However, in time of great need of this kingdom, namely when foreign forces, such as those of the pagans and other nations, are planning to attack the borders and frontiers of this same kingdom, then all the gentlemen of the realm must rise together with us in soldierly fashion against the aforesaid force. Sigismund was suspending the privilege of refusal to join the king in war. Every estate-holding noble needed to go to war in person or send one of their sons or brothers, if they cannot go to war for any reason, such as sickness, they had to equip soldiers and send them to fight in their name, or pay a fine dependent on the size of their estates. The larger land and office holders were also obliged to equip a small amount of archers dependent on the number of their tenants. Further clauses seized upon the revenues of the church, in the name of the defense of the kingdom against the heathen threat. However, the power you give me I will lay down when this crisis has abated, and as my first act with this new authority, I will create a grand army of the republic to cap. Wrong quote. However, once the present war is over, the entire cohort of the gentlemen of the realm who have been to war will regain their ancient liberties which were customary in the reign of our predecessors. <clears throat> Those on their way to the army and back are obliged to live under their own expenses. Any kind of looting, robbery, and seizing of foods of is prohibited. If someone acts otherwise, he will be forfeit convicted in the act of might and codes of what he has done. Sigismund also asserted the right to recover all the land that had been extorted from him during the early period of his reign but also to legitimize those same grants and any future ones for his supporters. In return for all of this, Sigismund expanded judicial rights for the minor nobility within their communities. He also promised to fire all the foreigners he had appointed to office while holding his fingers crossed behind his back. Most importantly, out of all of this, Nicopolis had taught Sigismund that an offensive war would not work. The Ottomans themselves were now set upon by a new threat from the east, giving Sigismund time to prepare, or waste. But in 1399, Sigismund had to again deal with family matters in Bohemia, also known as whether or not to dethrone his brother. We will get to that. <clears throat> 